After President Trump's election in November, then inauguration in late January, politicians the world over began virtue signaling in overdrive that their communities and jurisdictions would be the complete opposite of Trump's America. Famously, of course, our Prime Minister tweeted that everyone was welcome here in Canada no matter what. Well, after Justin, there are no greater virtue signalers in this country than the folks down at Vancouver City Hall. Mayor Gregor Robertson and his Vision Vancouver team control City Council, and according to multiple news stories and press releases, the city had been formulating and looking into implementing a sanctuary city policy. Sanctuary cities are one of the most contentious issues in urban America right now. We all know the worst of what these ill-advised policies can result in. Sadly, the murder of Kate Steinle comes to mind, as her killer had already faced deportation five times, and yet he still got back into the country, was protected by a sanctuary city policy, and then he murdered Kate Steinle. And with dramatic increases in illegal immigrants entering into Canada across our southern border, as our Faith Goldie has so remarkably reported on back east, sanctuary city policies in this country are going to become very, very dangerous, very, very quickly. While the number of illegals crossing into BC is less than Manitoba or Quebec right now, the Canadian Border Services stopped posting the number of illegal crossings each week back in March. So we really have no idea how many illegal immigrants are entering BC right now. And I suspect with the warmer weather and potential crackdowns coming in California from ICE, we may see a dramatic spike this summer. Because of this move by the city, we needed to find out more. So we filed a freedom of information request with the city and just this week got back a 200 page packet with all the details on how the city of Vancouver formulated their sanctuary city policy. It's quite the city we have here folks and it's not good. The first thing they sent us was a copy of a Washington Post article from September 7th called What exactly are sanctuary cities in immigration policy? Well, that's just great. The geniuses down at City Hall are using a left-wing activist paper, a purveyor of fake news, as their main source of information. While not formally calling it a sanctuary city policy, the city of Vancouver does what they call have a access without fear policy. Same thing, different name. The background and rationale from the city as to why this policy was needed is, quote, Vancouver is home to many immigrants and refugees. While the vast majority of people enter and remain in the country through authorized channels, there are those who are here without or have uncertain immigration status. These individuals include temporary foreign workers whose work permits have expired, or who have severed relationships with their employers, or those needing to separate from a spouse in the case of a sponsorship breakdown, refugees whose claims have been denied and students who overstay their visas, and others who enter the country under irregular circumstances." Unquote. I'll translate that for you. If you're an illegal immigrant, don't worry. The city of Vancouver wants to protect you. The political party that controls Vancouver is heavily funded and supported by globalist organizations such as Tides Canada. And two city councillors in particular, in my opinion, are the closest thing to democratically elected communists. That would be Jeff Meggs and Andrea Reimer, who are all over this sanctuary city policy and everywhere in this Freedom of Information package. So not surprisingly, the city decided to consult with every activist group under the sun in creating this policy. In particular, an activist group called Sanctuary Health seemed to have quite a bit of input with the city, at one point demanding the Vancouver police, quote, must end their working relationship with Canadian Border Services Agency, unquote. Crazy. But that's not all. Sanctuary Health demanded the city cut funding to anyone or any group that does not adopt a sanctuary policy. And then, just for good measure, they demanded money from the city to produce some kind of propaganda video? I'm not really sure. Even the Parks Board general manager is now suggesting the adaptation of a sanctuary policy by the freaking Parks Board. <sighs> but honestly, the worst of it was all this agenda by the radicals down at City Hall, Jeff Meggs and Andrew Reimer in particular, are using the hook of the Syrian refugee crisis to push this sanctuary city policy and to lean on the Vancouver police to be more hands off. Let me read just one point from a city document on the Syrian refugee crisis. Quote, Begin building a movement to sustain current level of interest generated by the Syrian refugee crisis by connecting key sectors with existing community initiatives targeted at vulnerable populations. Unquote. So this seems to me like the city is only interested in crafting this policy because they can capitalize on the interests surrounding the Syrian refugee crisis? Wow. Look, Mayor Gregor and city councillors 
How about helping the thousands of homeless Canadians on our streets every day? Or the dozens dying of fentanyl overdoses every week? Instead of virtue signaling a stupid sanctuary city policy and the embracing of unvetted Syrian migrants that could possibly endanger our citizens further. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. I know not all of you live in the city of Vancouver proper, but if you're in the Lower Mainland or anywhere in BC, make sure you contact your municipal government. Make sure they are not implementing these stupid sanctuary policies as well.